Sorry, Fine. some of some some of you has been removed when the recording starts. So hopefully they joined now or do we join? Toyin, have you joined again? Yes, but I think we we kicked out Toyin um, due to that. So assume that he will, okay. Uh, so let's start. So uh, Mubarak. Mubarak. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, I just have a quick question on DAX 1.1 when we have okay. to prepare a, a document. Uh, the, the first bullet point which is which online users belong to the control and expose groups. So my question is, are we to apply all the users that belong to each group inside the document or just to just to determine the number? That's the question. I mean, are, are we to apply, okay, maybe if the, the, the 2,000 users belong to um, control group, are we to apply the users? So task 1.1, 1. 1, right? So which question was that? Yeah. It, it says which online users belong to the control and expose groups. Yeah. Under, under, the, under, under the understanding if you testing framework. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a very much, uh, you know, explained here on the data. So when we describe the data, it says what is what. Control users who have been shown at WRD and users who have shown a creative ad that was designed by Smartart for the client. Basically, this is the answer. But I just want, we just want you to understand that, that you read the document as well, because this is key. Okay. Yeah, like that's, I think sometimes it's about really, the, we try to give as much so that Actually, the things that we ask are, you know, as we say, this is not for testing. We don't want, you know, we're, we're not school. So we really want you just whatever it is. Like, if you understand the data, then that's great for us. And it doesn't matter how you understand, but we want you that you understand the, with the data. And a lot of the questions in task one is all about that understanding, that do you really understand where the data is coming from, how the data is so... You know, um, and that's why I read this document really carefully and make sure that you understand it. Um, and then, so in here, it's that, but also how are the users targeted? Because, you know, you are supposed to design as a data scientist or a machine learning engineer in your company, you're more likely to design a certain thing, you know, um, like an A-B testing is just the most frequent thing that you do. And it's supposed to be a very simple thing because it's just, you know it's like but you you are something like the people around you will not know the the details and so you really have to be the you know the person in charge to and tell them the pros and cons of different strategies of targeting is it statistically sound because the the action of a b testing is very very simple it's like the tie you know basically it isn't as a simple work that you do as A-B testing. But the devil is in the detail. That means, did you sample correctly? It's sampling, it is targeting, like, did you choose your targets appropriately? You know, did they have equal chance or did you have bias in the sampling already? And so all that. So that's why we try to, like, these questions are more of like, if you were to design a similar experiment, you should be able to know that like, you know, understand how the users are targeted, why the users are targeted. You probably would read a bit about targeting. Um, and then also very simple things like, could, could we use the counts of yes and no? Like, because it's, it could be true, right? But what is the subtlety around there? You know, all the references that we gave you, some, some of them really talk about this. So if you just read one of them, you probably answer a lot why that's this case or why not. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Anything. So, you know, I am, 
you can ask. So it's a first day. And if you didn't even read it, it's okay. I mean, I'm sorry that I say, oh, you should read. But I'm saying, I know that it's a first day. You might not even have it covered all that. But still, just, you know, you can still ask whatever is kind of like, okay, you can ask me something like, I don't understand the whole thing for now. Specifically, what are we supposed to do? You know, something like that. If you don't understand, the most important part that you have to come out from this is that you understand what is requested and you, and then you can now have already in your mind a map, strategy map that, you know, what you will do today, what you will do tomorrow kind of thing. Okay, uh, the kingdom. Uh, mine is just uh, a question about uh, the data. There's a, there's a column called hours and I, I didn't really understand what that column does. Does it uh, calculate hours like uh, normal time or uh, is it the hours that the, the, the customer is uh, exposed to the, to, to the site or something? Yeah, let's look at it. I think by looking at the... So date hour and the hour of the day in our format. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the date and the hour that this was. Oh, so, so if it's today, you can say it's a uh, 19th yeah. and the hour is 13. So it's at, uh, yeah. in my, in my country is one. So we get, uh, yeah. the hour is like, uh, the time 13. one. Okay. Yeah, um, and that it's in our format, so it's basically for 24 hours, so it's basically yeah, 24 one to 20. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I'll, thank you. That makes sense now. Okay, so I think someone asked, they don't understand the whole thing about, um, okay, so there are two questions. Desmond, I don't understand the whole of A-B testing. <laughs> Good, okay. And then Elias, because his audio is not working, a couple of questions, the last week project, I've deployed the uh, Docker image in Oracle. My questions are on the way I did it, uh, was build the Docker image on my computer and then deploy it on Oracle. But building the image takes more than 20 minutes. If there's any connection issue, it will fail. So is there a better workflow? Absolutely. You can write um, basically a Docker file and I think probably Kevin has given you last time some way. So pro I think you build it probably from a Docker file. So there should be a way that actually Heroku will build it for you. So not you, you build it, but you build it. If not, you can also use Git workflow to build it for you and ship that. So in the configuration, you can ask it to copy to Docker Hub in your account and then you will just then take it, copy it from Docker Hub to um, to Heroku. So definitely, you don't have to build it yourself. Um, in that case, I think there are many ways, so you can check. Okay, and then uh, I located my computer itself for a few hosting servers. Yeah, that's because we don't have that much money, and we always just work uh, at that. Uh, like, you know, very, very thin line between able to host this thing, like all the expenses. Um, and then we're not, as we say, we're not that, non we are a non-profit, so there isn't anyone paying unless somebody pays for it. Um, yeah, you don't get it easily, that's, that's the reason. But going back to this month, and that's the main reason, nothing more, uh, we would have liked, so actually we know that to think, to kind of train people on this kind of topic requires a lot of resource. But, you know, um, better this way than not. So in terms of A-B testing, who wants to explain, you know, what they understood in the same way that I can help? Because I can, you know, I know it, so it's probably not a good idea that I explain, but I will correct if anyone has an understanding in you they want to explain. So just, um, okay, so, my data folder is empty. I'm not sure, Rachel, uh, that is, is that the case? Because if I look at the data, oh, that you are right. Who moved it out? Um, okay, so. Uh, 
Oh, God. That's the seat. Shouldn't happen that. The data is also available in the challenge description. So just get the data. Yeah, but like, can you move it, um, Bakar? The data here? Yes, I'll the do data. that. Okay. I'll move it. Great. Um, um, okay. So I will come back to my question. So, so it's a question you can find the data exactly. Okay, how can we measure the A/B testing? And okay, so let's start from uh, in Zelanen. So, do you want to say about what your understanding of A/B testing? Okay, thank you. <coughs> According to my understanding, the A/B testing normally stands for if you have. Uh, two groups two or two variants that we need to test it may be a software or something but i think that's why how its name came a variant a and variant b so what we do is we have a new experiment to taste so we prepare two groups one which has the variant a or it may be an old system and the second one, we have a variant B, which is which maybe the new system that we are experimenting to see its effects. So we normally prepare a metric to measure that thing. I think in our case, that was a brand awareness. That can be caused due to the smart ad. So in our case, the variant A or the control group will be shown a dummy ad. I think it's a traditional static kind of ad. And the variant B will be shown this new interactive ad designed by Smart Ad. So, uh, according to our data, the metrics, which is the brand awareness, is collected through a questionnaire. So, what I know and understand is the classical way of A B testing. So, we normally in A B testing, in the classical A B testing, we set a level of significance. So after we set a level of significance, we measure our matrix, how much the variant B or the smart ad campaign has had an impact on the brand awareness. So after we set a p-value of level of significance, if, that, if our result after the hypothesis testing came less than the level of significance, it means that this thing couldn't happen by chance. There must be some kind of relation between the new experiment and the matrix. So I think we can accept the, the A-B testing, if that is the case. Otherwise, if it's greater than the level of significance, this thing it is a high probability that has happened due to chance. So. My understanding is that generally we test two systems. One that is uh, that have a different experiment on it. So based on our level of significance, we determine if the result is due to by chance or if it's due to something that has caused it. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I think that that's so now I, I go back to this one. And whatever you understand, you have to tell us what you understand and what you don't yet, what's not clear to you. Um, so what do you understand so far by, by this and what, what, what is the part that you don't still understand? Uh, we can't hear you this month. Can you hear me now? A little bit better. Well, um, I, I understood a little bit what he said. Uh, the A B testing. testing could, could you be? Is, is it that the mic is very faint? Like that? Could you make it closer to your mouth? Can you hear me now? It's OK. Yeah, okay. go on. Uh, uh, 
I understood a little bit what he said that um, the A-B testing comes from uh, uh, testing of two variables, variances like maybe test A and test B, where we try and uh, um, measure of how, measure how maybe score B scores against score A. Like for example, he gave, the example he gave in uh, our, our data that we're using, uh, the old system of um, advertisement and the new, the new system of advertisement. So we are just going to try and measure uh, how the new, the new one works against the old one. Yeah, I think roughly that is the case, except exactly that is like when you try to answer. So still, uh, what Zalalem described is, is good. There are many details that are still, of course, left, right? The general idea is very correct. Uh, but what is not correct, oh no, it's not, I mean, he didn't say it, but there are details that that of course one needs to know more, right? So you have to ask, you have to ask, you have to not understand them from what he said. So you should be able to have those questions as well. But I think the general idea, I think you seem to get it exactly. There are two variants, but then there is, you must understand what is called the A testing. So not only the A-B testing. So if Bezman now, if you know what is A-B testing, what do you think is the A testing? You know, out of logic conclusion, logical branching. Uh, the A testing now means just uh, the previous. The A A testing. So instead of the A B, the A A testing. Or the A A testing. Mm. Now, what do you think it is? I think maybe it's just a testing of uh, the, the uh, one variant. Like uh, you test A against A, like against itself so that you know how it scores against itself very good yeah so why do you think that should be, that sometimes is useful oh, I, I didn't get you how do you th why do you think that sometimes is useful to do that do you do, do you kind of can you come up with a reason in your head why sometimes that may be useful well, I think it is useful um, when we try to know how our media our system works or how uh, the output of the same thing that we are trying to measure that variance works. Fantastic. Okay. That's absolutely correct, this uh, one. Great. So, Christian. Yeah, so uh, I just want to add that the AA testing can be also when you have maybe some kind of uh, maybe you get to you already have some value you get and you have your sample you have to compare what you get in the sample to the due value yeah maybe uh, let me okay it's, it's like you you already have some kind of mean of the, of the population you see and you get your sample you want to compare what you get in the sample due to uh, to, a, to a mean of a population, something like that. Am I right? So I think it is. So in one of the reference, I think it's the Kaggle. Uh, so in the references, if you go, I think there is one. Um, this it's. Uh, it's probably the A-B testing statistics. No, this is the GitHub one. Um, it's probably this one, A-B testing with Python. Uh, or this one, so the one of the must trips. Um, so there, like you would find this very complete um, part. It's, I think, A-B testing with Python, right? So it, it basically is about something else, like another project doing very similar. So this works Udacity's uh, final project that was about testing, A-B testing on a Coursera, on an Udacity's kind of uh, page, like they added some, some feature uh, in their website and they want to test that, they collect the data and you have that. 
So the A testing in particular means is that you want to check, it's called a sanity check, that you are actually, if you measure like exactly as Desmond really put it nicely, if you want to understand the, the, the you know the deviations, the variances along your already matrix like that you are using, you know, even without changing anything, you need to have that baseline. And for that baseline understanding, you might need to do A testing. And basically you just split without changing any variable. Uh, and then you see how far you know how much variations are there. That we can use that as a baseline. Um, and usually that gives you the the really kind of like okay, you know, you don't expect below, of course, any variation within that amount is is not you know normal. So you have to set a goal how much variation then do you expect with a new change. So if you want to set a certain goal, okay, I'm I'm gonna introduce you know a color in my website. Maybe color in my website, I don't need even a small one percent above the noise is good. Then in that case, but what you have to know what is the noise? The noise could be two percent. So two percent variation is probably is okay, even without any change. So that means you you probably expect that okay. Now I'm going to set my target as three percent lift. It's called a lift or change in a positive direction. So to to get that kind of idea, you might do a testing or to do also invariant metrics. That means to check even before you do your A/B testing, um, you you need to set that. So that's sometimes the, the usefulness. And if you follow that, you really understand a lot of like why you have to set all these uh, matrices. And uh, a lot of basically everything you need to know is there. And another one, very simple, is that, OK, the distributions when the numbers are smaller, in our case, it's small, the number of um, samples we have. So instead of the Gaussian case, you might use the beta distribution. So A-B testing with statistics reference would give you this very, you know, the codes even uh, in Python to do that, um, blah, blah. So it's like everything that you need is probably in that document, except you just, you just have to understand, you have to discuss. The reason we put you in a group is really for, for you to really discuss and kind of everybody reads most of these references and come back and talk and kind of, I think within one day you will be able to get as much as you can. And tomorrow you start you can start writing. If you don't understand, just ask. Um, so that's okay. Any I think there were a couple of other questions. Um, so similarly, how can we measure A B testing? So it's A B testing is for measurement, similarly. And I'm not sure what you mean, but it basically means you know, you are measuring some significance. So normally, the very simple, and then, you know, everybody does is that, okay, how how likely, I usually ask this question, um, how, when you guess the birthday of my mother, so can somebody guess my, my mother's birthday, Stacy? It would be difficult. So please. No, 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 can, can yeah, yeah, but I, I just want, I just want to, to do so. Stacy, can you guess? October twelfth. Of okay, October twelfth of the year. So just only the date. Great. So October twelfth. What is the probability that he's right? Jackie Douglas, that. What is the probability? It's very simple, right? What is the probability that that is right? Anyone? I mean, is that too easy? Ah, okay, you're already, yeah, that's great, exactly. Yeah, that's one over 360, sorry, I didn't see the message. So, and now I ask the Jakinda, so it's either October 12th or December 1. Do you change? Mm. I'm tempted to, but yeah, I can I, I can stick to to mine. Okay, what like? How do you think now the probability evolved? Anyone uh, like who, who who can say that his choice is sticking is by how much is it better uh, or kind of is it better or worse? Uh, 
so pardon i haven't heard your question my internet by is like great. so you 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 said you will stick with your decision which is fine i'm as i'm asking the probability that that might be right now given the second information by how much do you think it's like by a lot by a small i just not a number but just some is he wrong to not change by a huge amount or by kind of i don't know amount uh, I think it will be it will be wrong for me not to change given the other option. Yeah, but, but like by also, how much? By how much? I just want to know. Uh, I think by huge or by half because I might be right or wrong given the two okay. options. So I would tell you that's wrong. Okay. So anybody else? Because this is how you understand that you know why statistics is just you know not your friend you have no intuition unless you know it unless you understand it kind of and then it gets easier mm -hmm. 360 joseph is 364 364 that's one okay yeah okay so changing will be okay so i think you, you're getting it. The, the point is that his probability of getting it right in the first place was 100, 365. And that hasn't changed. But my other choice, which I gave, which was December 1, given that I knew because I only gave you two, had a probability of being right, 364 over 365. That means almost one. His probability was zero in the first time. Like, you know, if you just, it's 0 0.001. Right or zero one or something, so his probability was zero point zero one. The probability, I, like the probability that I gave, the second choice because now it's reduced, is three hundred sixty four because I reduced everything I take out. He, he just chose October twelfth, and I take out that and all the other samples. I reduced them to one, which is basically to December one, given that I know. Right now, when you compare, one is three hundred sixty four or almost the probability of one being right, the other one is probability of zero being right, and he's still kind of sticking. Nobody would do that in a normal life, right? But the thing is, the thinking behind, you, you just have to do it, and it's not natural. So it is, the, it, is, it is fine when it's like that, but then now let's imagine another one, another scenario, that you have three doors. Okay, so this is called, uh, it's a very known, famous uh, brain teaser. You have three doors. In, so it's a game uh, that you, you will choose one door, and if you get it right somehow, then you will win a Ferrari, a car. But in the other two doors, there are goats. So you'll only get just a sheep or a goat. Okay, now the game is like this. You would just go, you don't know, it's randomly, but the, uh, it's called Monty Python, the, the whole thing. Monty Python, the person, is like, or the Monty Hall, exactly, sorry, not Monty Python. The, the Monty Hall um, show host just comes and he asks you, and then the doors are A, B, C. And now you say C, randomly, because you didn't know, right? And then knowing that, uh, you know, watch where the car is, he would just open one door, which is not C, which is not what you say, but either A or B, he knows, and it's a goat. And then you, he would tell you to change. Will you change or, you, or would you stay? Would you stick with this, with your choice? Because if you stay, if you win, you get a Ferrari car. If not, just a goat. So what do you say for this one? Who would change? Okay, who would stick with their plan? Nabiu. Okay, go on, Nabiu. Nabiu, you raised your hand. Do you want to go? I just want to say I would change by okay. raising my hand. Okay, okay, great. So, Zalalem, also, do you want to say something else or? Yeah, yes, I would, say, I would also say that I would change because the probability will definitely change. 
from that. So most of the time, if I didn't tell you the first reasoning, it would most people would, would just stick with their choice. Now you know it. It's like just it, because you learned a little bit, and therefore it makes sense now because the second by reducing by opening one, what he did is that he reduced the two doors to one. So your first choice was one third. Now the second choice that's left, which is because he opened A, now B has the uh, probability of two third. So given that you are statistic savvy, you will change, right? So this is called how significant this, but this one is not obvious, right? Because it's more complex. This is two third versus one third. And the closer they are, the harder it becomes. You know, when the chance is like 10% only improvement, this is very different for human mind. The human mind always gets it wrong, basically, because we only understand zero and one. You know, if, if the probability is zero and one, and if we have to choose, then we like one, because, you know, we can understand. But if the probability is 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, we don't understand. Like our brain is not that clever, or like it's not suitable for this kind of thinking. That's why we need to do significant testing. That means when we say data driven, that's the whole point of data science is to be data driven. To be data driven means to measure significance. That means usually if we assume it as two variants, then it's called A-B testing. But it's the general class that we do in our daily life as a machine learning engineer is kind of significant or hypothesis testing. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, um, uh, so anyone else? Um, I, I think you do, uh, Deborah. Like when you submit, you get feedback. We 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 mark. It's just that the late the late policy applies. So that's why I always recommend whatever you have to submit it first, and if you have to change change it later, you know. Let it be from our, our, our mistake, not yours. You stick with the plan. So, um, the link, yeah, I, okay. So, anyone else? So, Robert, a, cha a challenge I faced, I wrote the code in the book, and when I moved to stream data, I need to rewrite the code since the stream data is the notebook method. Coding. So, the approach is to write this concurrently. No, you can just always convert from the notebook. I mean, there are many ways to convert. NB convert is one, but you can also export it as pi.py as a script. There are many ways, just you can ask in, in Rocket Chat and people can tell you even there are like in Git, there is an automatic way that you could also change it, set up something like that. So it's it's easy. Um, I think conversion, I think that the UL use question has been answered. Okay, uh, Itani? Go. Italy, we are not hearing you if you are speaking. Okay, did you drop? Ah, okay. So anyone else? So anyone else want to understand or to have some question about these things? Because I may have um, I may have missed. If not, I will just in the rest of the time, I'll just give you a very small presentation. Uh, that is more of the you know the complexities that are involved um, in these things. I will just raise them so that you will think about them, but not much. So one part of that I raised is of course this. You know you have to think about like so in the data, for example, there is the, what you would see is that they are zero zero for both yes and no, right? So and sometimes what does that mean? That means we both, you know, we showed that, but the person didn't answer. How would you count that? Um, will you throw them, you know, or will you? So it's kind of this is what you would consider. The simplest is, of course, to throw. But when you throw, you're biasing. Who are not answering? So the first thing you will check is that maybe is this the same? So as one of the invariant metrics. So here is what is invariant. Is just things that shouldn't change because as we said a is variant a that means always when you do a b testing you don't change everything you only change one thing a or b you know that, that that's that's kind of concept so in this case for example what, what did we change the only variant is between a user 
that sees the, the ad, like the creative um, for the, the brand or not. Only the view is the, the, the dimension that we are buying. So everything else shouldn't matter. So that means not answering shouldn't matter between them. So you may check like how many people didn't answer from the control or the, the kind of the exposed you know, or the A and the B. And they shouldn't be statistically too much significant. I mean, they should be just random. And everything else, even the, the kind of apps, like so in each of those the data metrics that you have, like in the, in the data, it shouldn't change. Of course, the data is small, that might, might be very noisy. You might not know, but everything else other than the experiment, in principle, shouldn't matter, right? So you should check like that the hour distribution is not that different, the device make is not that different, platform, the, the number of platform distribution shouldn't be different. But of course, what does it mean different? It just means like statistically, it should, it should be random. Statistically random doesn't mean that they are different. I mean, they could still be different and statistically they're okay, they're similar. So understand what it means statistically not significant. The change should be just random. So what random means. So that's one very key point when you follow especially this, you know, the whole point is that if the, the thing is changing, so many things are changing, A-B testing, especially the classical one doesn't work. The machine learning can handle that. So that's the pro, like, you know, I've asked you something, so that's the kind of advantage. The disadvantage of sensitivity might be a disadvantage, so read about that. And here, in the, like, in the, so the starter code, in the kind of sequential testing, it's the same, you can read about sequential testing in the references that we give, but also what really is the difference is that almost every statistics assumes what is a random variable. So in a normal classical test, n, which is the number of uh, experiments that you carried out, is fixed. So it's not a random variable, it's constant. But sequential test, or sometimes what you want is to check every day. Every day when the experiment is running, you want to check. So if n becomes then, because every day n is now different. And not only that, because you are counting cumulative every day, n is variable, right? So because of that, you might then, when you take into account the variation in n and multiple times doing the experiment, you need to, you can't use the usual one, and that's why this sequential testing comes in. And, um, and you can understand, and the code is given there, like the actual algorithm is, give, is given to you here. It's basically almost everything is in the conditional SPRT. Maybe you can translate it into a class, uh, so that you can get everything, but you know it's given to you here, right? That it's up to you to just check. And here it's basically just to use those the one above and to just write your own code, just such that you get. As long as you understand what sequential test, this is just the simplest thing that you do, and it's that you know it's basically that you will be able to just only call the functions from there and and get the results. And here is basically just how you would print. And so it's very, for you guys, it should be easy, but something, you know, understanding and doing sometimes is very different things. So if you are confused, just work in a group. Like one person can, can, can work on this, or a few people can work on that. A few people can work on the classical test. A few people are reading on the thing. And then you can share, come and share. And, you know, as we say, you can share the code, you can share the thing, but you still have to publish it yourself into your own repository organize your thing and write something yourself. But the codes you can share, the references, the concept answer within your group you can share. Um, that detail. And another detail is, is really the most important part is this. So the sample size, sometimes a lot of a lot of the I, I shared this one, this I got it, you know, it's from the internet, but I, it's a very good one. Uh, it's a Stanford course, but I, I like it because it contains many of the things that I want to, to tell you. So a lot more of the complications comes because you don't know in advance, as I said, how many do you need for a test. So if you, like, can somebody answer to me, I can't see, so you have to unmute yourself and answer the following question. 
what is the problem if you have 100 sample every time and the significance you want to test is 95% confidence interval and now whenever you measure uh, like whenever you are measuring this thing 100 times how many times do you expect by chance to get a result that is consistent saying that you know the null hypothesis is wrong so let's imagine the null hypothesis is that saying with the 100 sample the mean of the 100 sample is one while uh, so the null hypothesis saying the mean is zero while of course then the alternative hypothesis saying that you know the mean is not zero right so now you 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 have 100 uh, whenever when you collect 100 samples you have done or like when you collect your data you have measured it 100 times how much you know what is the mean when how many times do you think you you will see that the mean is not one even if the actual sample or the population is has a mean of zero so i know the question is slightly my you might not understand some of you but like if you understand it try to answer i can't see it so just one has to tell me um yeah, well, well. yeah. so uh, uh, we are assuming we, well the mean for the whole sample is zero so right. you are doing 100 tests that means that yes. you, you have uh, you have a number of days and then yeah. in that number of days while you are collecting the data you test it to see if it is significant or not 100 times okay um and then 100 times you compute the mean and then you see like how much is you know whether you know whether you have crossed or not uh, whether the mean is zero or not so how many times would you see that the mean is not zero um five times great so i think you understand it that really means because you are assuming 95 percent confidence interval you it means five times you might you might just see something weird you know so that's what it means if you assume 99 percent then you say out of 100 one time you might expect that that's why we sometimes go to a much more like 99.99 percent confidence interval when we say that then we will only see one out of ten thousand if we do we have to carry out ten thousand tests to get one thing wrong like so because of that it's exactly so depending on the the kind of the level of significance that you have to quantify you sometimes need to modify model and you also have to assume how many samples did you have to get to distinguish so that's called power quantification that means the power of not only the level of significance but also the power of the data to give you that significance so just i will just only cover one slide but check this slide because it has, it's really explains a lot so when you have this is the null hypothesis okay the top one so let, you know the data is kind of there you have 263 cases one to one and one thousand two hundred forty one controls right so the control basically um is what you are assuming the null hypothesis that you basically the mean is zero right it's distributed and the bottom one is what you collected from the exposed cases, right? So it has, of course, some dispersion and a mean of 10. Now, what we really are saying is that null distribution, difference zero, clinically relevant alternative, difference 10. Now, if you choose uh, this value, so that's basically a 95% confidence interval, so you calculate you know the area um on the left in the right sorry who, which contains 95 percent or which contains basically before it 95 percent so only five percent is left and then you just say okay this is my rejection area so if data falls like at this point then i can assume this this belongs to the alternative at 95 percent um significance level okay so that means you're saying like, 
I accept the risk. Five percent, it could be still in the net, but I accept that risk. But the power, so that's basically what it says, but the power, unfortunately, tells you another thing. It says the power is that if the actual alternative was true, that point, that data, you know, how much, so basically, uh, what is the chance of rejecting, right? So I'm going to ask, so this is basically saying like, ah, so you will have, let's say, if this was like six, seven, um, you know, as a number, okay. Three. So this basically, the, the power tells you, if you, if this is, if the right of uh, the alternative, you have more data or more of your data in there, the power becomes higher. Right? So that means, in this case, let's say the power is 80%. So the power of rejecting, or the data tells you, you have a power of 80% rejection there if the data falls at 6.5, right? If the mean that you observe is 6.5. So that's, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the technicality, but what about if the change is smaller? So that means what you expect is a very small change. Of course, if it's a small change, again, let's imagine that it falls at this at this value, um, the critical value of the data, and you have, you know, again, still it's a 2.5% area, so that means at at significance level of 95%, um, you you basically can say, ah, like I can reject them. But what is the power of your statistics? It's now 15% only. It's not like 80% because a lot of the data falls inside the NAV region. And that's, I know it might be slightly, and because I'm not explaining it correctly, I just only want to give you this idea that the two are, it's not only, but if, if when the data is getting larger and larger, the concentration becomes, the dispersion becomes smaller and smaller, and the power gets higher and higher. So that's why, you know, you can just play it around. So in this case, for example, Either if the shift between the null and the alternative is big, then in this case, you know, the power is 100%. Because all everything is on the right of the null. All of the alternative is on the right of the null, so your pa the power of the test is called 100%, which is really the best, right? Because you can reject now the null with the highest power at 95% confidence interval. So that's what it really means. Um, here again, the power is now forty percent because the difference is not so like that. It, it, this slide can give you factors affecting blah blah. You know, so I'm I'm, I'm just going to stop there. But these are key areas one needs to understand in this in the statistics um, in A/B testing. It's it, it is very simple. It's just idea that's difficult. Difficult. Okay, so I will stop there and look for. Um, Michael, you raised your hand, so. Yes, um, so with the power you are talking about, uh, yeah. is it directly related to the sensitivity of the test? So it is, so the significance, yeah, the, the, the level is, yeah, it's basically the sensitivity. So that means, okay. like, All right. you know, you can have like three data points, right? You can always say like, oh, I reject something. But the data doesn't doesn't have even enough to reject it because the dispersion is so high that that you're basically like even if you say like oh it falls outside uh, the you know it, it, at the significance level is something like ninety five percent but it has no power so always just that means you know you're you're being correct if you collect more data your result being correct is wrong basically low. So the power tells you exactly the sensitivity. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Please, I, I, I want to ask you one question. My question is, what you show us previously is it a, a, a testing? No, no. This is A B testing. Like I mean, I have two alternative and I mean, A is more like A and A B are the same. Except in the A A test, you test the data against itself by splitting it, uh, but without changing anything. So you want to see. If there are actual variations, of course there are variations. If you split, you know, let let me imagine that here there is no 
difference in in kind of like people submitting uh, on time, depending on let's say country. Let's assume that. If that is the case, then I'm just going to do that, and I want to measure like depending on let, let's say ah, like this is much harder to give example, but let's imagine that um, the the hour that people check their Instagram or Facebook or social media is probably random. I, I don't assume that it will be uh, at least within the same, same time zone, country specifically, right? So I might then want to test my hypothesis that before, but then what I want is to, to be able to later to analyze another alternative saying like, okay, um, a country in Kenya, it's very different from the rest, right? So, I think what I would do first is that at least without first introducing Kenya, across all the others, it's basically the same. So, that is A, it is, because I'm, like, I assumed that there shouldn't be any variation within other parts or within other dimensions other than Kenya in this case. So, if, if not, or... I would then quantify how much variations are there among countries, um, the hour, the specific hours they, they kind of check their social media, it could be. So, so these kind of tests you do to, to create a baseline and to have an understanding of what kind of alternative makes sense is called A test. But really the A test is really the same, exactly what you do for A B test, but without any variation. Okay. So splitting the same data and treating it as if they are different okay. and now, see how different they are. Okay, now, now my, my second question is, is about uh, before I, I, I decide to split my, my data or my columns, did, 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 uh, did I need some kind of maybe uh, rules? I, I, I Absolutely. Was Absolutely, because everything depends on that. If you create on a wrong assumption, let's say like if you don't treat the two samples equally, other than the only variation is you know whatever that you are measuring, then you know let's imagine just in this case in our case you have the the people who uh, has seen a dummy ad and another one the brand ad. So in this case, if you really treat them not equally, that means if you don't sample equally, or if you don't target them equally or if you target one differently from the other, all this will bias your results. So you must create, you must test carefully, you must set up, it's called arranging. You must arrange your A-B test carefully. So everything happens, the quality of the data happens before you actually collect the data. So you must ensure that. You must ensure you are fair, statistically, you know, very uniform sampling. So the only variation that there should be is just only one thing. That is the one that you want to measure against. So so uh, now so once once I collect the data and maybe all that step previously I did it well. Uh, to split my 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 data in two parts, will I ch will I choose just fifty percent and fifty percent or? Yeah, I think mostly mostly like that. But again, depending on in which you know, how much it takes, you know, money, blah, 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 you might, you, you know, it's kind of, then we are talking sampling. You know, you might assume some type of sampling, correct after sampling. So I think that one is all about the environment you are in. So of course the best to not complicate the situation is to have 50-50 and you split it at the start in the experiment, not after you collect. You, you then target, in this case, for example, we target them, we target them through a cookie, like that is placed, blah, 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 you know. It's, it's, that setup is another thing. It's a sampling thing. So it's basically like, uh, if you are, if you want to learn about people's satisfaction uh, on a government, as a government service, you, know, you can't sample everybody in a country. So what you do is that you have to really sample all these polls that, Whole studies, like for example, for elections in the US or in Europe, whatever that you hear, is exactly doing this. They will, I mean, I mean, not the A B test in this case, but the sampling, they have to do it carefully. 
that they are not biased by the sampling. So you have to do all that care. Uh, you know, you are not choosing the one over the other. You know. Okay. Like, Thank you. Okay. Uh, one last question. Uh, yeah. Before I will, I will make a sample. There, there, there are maybe can I? Uh, you see, when you, when you make your sample, once you get the, the data, and I split it in two parts. If another we, person, we keep, I think we, we keep saying after you get the data, you split it in two parts. No, you do the splitting in the beginning. That okay. means you have to distinguish which sample is which at the beginning, like when you collect the data, not not after you get the data. Okay, okay. So let's suppose that is that. Yes, once once I did it. Maybe if another person did it with the same data, he will not collect. He will not get the same variation because they, they will choose. They will. They were. Uh, I think that values will be choose randomly in each sample. Yeah, but then that means. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's the whole point of significance test. If you do it correct, then you have to believe science that it will give you the same answer. Okay. If it doesn't now, give you the same answer, then it means yeah. that you were samples where you know we're wrong or this thing is time varying you know, it varies in time so it's not constant so it's telling you something about what you're measuring okay but in principle like with all the assumptions that is there it should just be the same that's what we believe science if it works once it will work the statistics is science it's a mathematics so if it works and if every of all of your assumptions are correct then it should work as expected Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, you, you see, in R there are, there are some kind of uh, centers that we call set seed, you not know, set seed. You see, to fix one value and to make maybe your sample. And, and when you give maybe the, the methodology sure. of the script to another person, you can get the same answer. Is it possible yeah. also to do the same thing in Python? It is always just it's a random seed. Is always every every programming has a seed. You just say it's a random seed. When you say a random, when you create a random, but here we don't ask you to generate anything random, so you don't need it. But if you do generate a random number to get the same thing, you would you would say. But that's only if you generate it yourself. Okay. Here the data Thank is given. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Actually, Michael, the last question. Um, actually, mine is not a question. I'm, it's it's clarify. I'm seeking for clarification. So, okay. um, it means when you get when before the beginning of the uh, of the uh, A/B testing or of the testing in general, and you have you have your data set and you have a particular column which um, which is categorized according to the responses they according to the responses or the uh, according to the type of ad you show to them, you have to split. Um, um, you have to split the data set by the type of ad first, then you do the sampling, random sampling for each set, then later then you put them together for your testing. Why do you random sample? I don't understand. Um, I'm saying that, so assuming you showed, um, you showed uh, uh, an ad A, which is the control, and then uh, maybe B, which is um, the treatment. So now, you have a column which is um, control and treatment. Now, when you get a data set from what I'm seeking to uh, get clarification on, you have to um, group the data set into the control and then the other group. Then you randomly sample in the control and use the same criteria to sample in the treatment. And then you put them mm -hmm. together and then you continue your test. Yeah, so uh, sorry, I misunderstood. Right. Then. Okay, so okay, the thank you the when you set up the experiment so in this case the data was collected cookie based so that means we knew uh, who has seen the the ad because when they saw the ad we placed a cookie in their computer right in their browser and therefore now when we sample so we buy we don't know like who's coming because we don't know we only buy like impression it's called or like uh, a person coming in the web, and we buy them, we buy that thing, when we win, we check if this person is, you know, the kind of has seen the code, or has seen the ad or not. So if they haven't seen the, the ad, what do we do? We show them some dummy ad, 
and then we just don't include them now in the experiment. But later when they come, we will say, does this person, has this person seen, so next time we try to buy the same person, so, and then we say like, does this person see either our dummy ad or our, uh, the kind of the, the, the brand? If the, that situation or that rule satisfied, we say, okay, great. Now it, it becomes our sample. It's part of our sample. And then we show them this question, right? So, because we now target the same thing, we'll get more or less equal number because we are, so, we are showing equally our demi ad as well as our um, the the brand. So we measure, we get the same the same thing, and so we try to then you know it's kind of like balance the numbers so that they're 50-50 right. kind of. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that's how Thanks. you always do exactly. All right. Thank okay. you, Daniel. Final, final. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my question is regarding to sampling. Uh, the data that is given to us, uh, I'm assuming that it is the sampled data. So uh, do we need to do sampling on the given data that required? Because I'm assuming that the data is already sampled. Yeah. Yeah. The data is very basically just what you collect is that there is a person who has seen who satisfies the condition. That means that like our universe is people who have seen either the dirty art or a brand art. So everybody in that row is one of them. So that means it's like a, a sample of those people who have seen either a dummy art or a thing. So you start that. That's a sample of that, a sample of the universe. So there is no resampling needed. But the, there is some complication a little bit. Some people who satisfy this, they may have not responded at all. They didn't say yes or they didn't say no because you know, we don't force them. So there are some places, some, some of rows, which is actually zero, zero. You can use them as a, as a kind of, you know, sanity check that there shouldn't be that much difference among them and all that. But other than that, there's no need sampling, sampling. You might need to drop, see the effect when you do the actual significance test, um, or you might try to kind of like do, but I would say just dropping them uh, and treating still as kind of, or assuming they are no for all of them, but that will bias. So it's a, the, the easiest sometimes is like, you use only those zero zeros as a kind of sanity check and then drop them. If there are many, then we'll talk, but I don't think there are many and you can easily drop them and you can check only the, the with the parts that people who answered. And then you can explain the, you know, the challenge in doing that statistically what does it influence? So if, if it's kind of constant, then it's okay. And if they are both like the control and the, the equal number or roughly statistically equal number, uh, the zero zeros are equal number between control and exposed, I think there's no effect, of course. If there is not equal number, you know, you might want to check um, and think about it, but I would say. Okay, thank you. No. So great. I think anything else? Let's discuss. Um, uh, yeah, but you know, like in A/B testing, you really don't want to introduce anything of a problem. Like in a sense that you don't want to create. Of course, you can do that if they are small numbers, but you don't know. So that basically, if you equally distribute, it's the same as not doing anything or upsampling. So you could have upsampled also just uh, similarly but it is yeah it's kind of sometimes you have to try clean and then only when you the clean is not the case then you can try different cases but you know i would say try it as if this is like you know a lot of the time this is the question people companies want you to give them a good answer like that good answer basically is that you want to tell them like uh your ad is working so then you have a pressure on that so of course it is your integrity if you say that and in you are proved to be wrong you know that means you are considered not great right so it's exactly where we are i mean this is a real life project that you do 
and doing that. Okay, uh, Bahugu, just one last one. Okay, so from your expl explanations and from what I have already read, I am confident that I have understood what A-B testing is. Mm -hmm. So we have one variable and we change one aspect of it and we see the effect of it, yeah. which is the reaction people made to it. Yeah. Uh, on our data, we ha I was able to see that there are um, users who responded yes or no for a specific question yeah. this is one type of uh, like a b testing i saw and the other there are users who saw uh, the ad or the question the ad and there are users who didn't see the ad yeah. so which uh, specific is that the their answer that is retesting or is that the yeah. fact the that they saw in the, the answer is not a dimension the answer is a label so the actual dimension, the feature dimension is the part called experiment, control or uh, exposed. So that's the only dimension that you are varying. That means it's it's the people who sees that or doesn't see that or see another demi -ad. So and then the the answer is just a label. Like anywhere, it's a click. Click is a label. It's not the variable. So when you say variation, you are actually talking about features. So, yeah, does that answer well good? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Okay, so we have to close it. But Daniel, what is your last question? I'm sorry, I forgot some one okay. question. Yeah. Uh, in what base do we choose our significant level? Uh, what things should we consider I to choose? usually it's money and all that so if you choose a low uh, a very tight uh, significance or high significance you usually require a lot of sample so that is usually that so that's why you choose 95 percent because if you want only error error one in a hundred it gets you know it gets expensive if you choose one in a thousand it's even more expensive one in a million it's even nicer but you know like no medical people would like to just test, you know, to do that. Or also, ad companies, they don't want to do that. They only just want to be right to a certain extent. So, yeah, budget and the complexity of the experiment and all that uh, is what drives you. So, in this case, just choose 95%. Okay, okay, thank you. Awesome. I know that there are a number of questions. So what I would say is this thing. Whatever you don't understand when you read more questions, if there are some, you know, when you read the challenge and stuff, you have some question, kind of post them. And also because now you're working in a group, please discuss and have a strategy. And by today, you should be able to have a basically a clarity. The more you are basically you have answer to all the questions and you're working on the course and stuff. Okay? And the coding is not that complex. So um, just make sure this is your chance to start kind of breezing and at the same time set up some things that, um, yeah, it's kind of help each other, make it easier for uh, kind of like the things that you missed to learn last time, for example, setting up in Git, whatever. Now I think the coding isn't that much, so you can learn it, come back. And because you are in a team, just use the advantage of the team. If someone is good in that area, get them and kind of let them explain to you. So really make sure this week you have got that kind of like breathing space and, and you are following. Because next week will be a slide up like in terms of modeling. So next week we'll be a little bit involved. We'll, we'll ask you some to do some PyTorch, this and that, more of modeling issues and assuming MLOps is kind of taken care of. So this week is your chance to kind of set up your system that you're gonna use the same type of ML logs, that means DBC um, uh, and ML flow and CLE. So whatever you set up here will make your life easier and easier as you go. So I use the advantage, whatever you have, learn it from your team and make sure you have it and working. And that's my advice. Cheers guys.